You're listening to Drinks and a Movie with your host, Rudy. Spoiler alert. Here we go. Drinks and Movie Podcast. Everybody, thanks for uh, tuning in and checking out this new episode. We've got another spirits-driven episode uh, just coming out right before Christmas. We're talking High West. I am with the uh, spirit ninja, spirit specialist, of High West out of Utah, Becky Smith. Becky, thanks for joining me. Um, and yeah, we're just going to talk about uh, kind of your career in this world, how you got into, uh, I mean, I guess, working with High West and kind of the history of the of the distillery. And we're going to try some very special pours here as well um, that I'm super excited for. So awesome. Thanks. So what I'm hearing, Rudy, it's a lot of me time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I feel like to talk about myself, we need to like start with a pour. I know yeah. we have a few to go through. I brought because of the season and it's highly allocated our special, a midwinter night stram. We have act nine that you provided. Mm-hmm. We have act 10 that I brought in and then I have extra special release, super surprise, which is the encore distillery only release. First time we've ever done this. Um, you want to go ahead and like do a little nip before we get started? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. I think I have act nine right here. (laughs) You always got to serve the other person first. So here we go. Oh, sorry. And then Matt, if you want to bring your glass over. Come on over here. Yeah, Yeah, get it over here. Shout out to uh, Matt Lackey, who if you've listened to the show, (laughs) he's been on a lot of episodes. He's here helping me set up. So thank you for sharing with him. If the camera starts to get wonky, we'll know what's up, right? (laughs) (laughs) Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate you. First off, I love the color of this. Sorry to be a dweeb, but. You know, the full High West lineup, I would say, when you have them, you know, we're very blessed, you know, in a cool way that we have the core two. So our our bourbon and our double ride, that's going to be something you find. That's your everyday drinker, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to be something behind the bar, whether in a well or just mixing in your cocktails or old fashioned, your Manhattans, you know, the the sky's the limit. Um, But those are going to be pretty common. You're going to find year round. High West has really gotten, you know, really good at these allocations, these limited releases. Um, obviously, a Midwinter Night Stram, the most sought after. Um, but we have a really cool lineup starting in February. We have Boo Rye, which is a split of bourbon and rye, mm-hmm. um, a really cool blend of those mash bills. That's distillery only now. Um, and then you move to Rendezvous. And we'll, we can talk about that more, but Rendezvous was our flagship. That was the very first bottling that we did starting um, when we opened in 2006, 2007. Um, you move forward. Another super unique, very cool thing that is unique to us is Campfire. And that is a tri-blend of bourbon, rye, and scotch. It's a peated scotch. Um, I can't think of a more aptly named spirit, honestly. And then you move forward, we have um, Midwinter Night Stram that comes out in the in the fall. And then we round out the year right before the holidays with High Country, which is our 100% American single malt. Currently, it's our only distillate that we do 100% at High West. That is absolutely all us. Um, but when you line all of those, you know, marks up and you see them, you know, if we're, you know, have the good luck of having them featured on a back bar and you see them all lined up, that color is the first thing. You know, apart from this beautiful, really unique bottle, it's really tall. It's got the wooden top. Um, You know, recently in this April, we did a brand changeover, if you will. Um, So you can kind of see, you know, the changing over. Um, We worked with a wonderful artist named Ed Mel, and we had that artist series for a while. But now we're switching over. They're going to be very unified. But one thing that you talked on is this beautiful color. So we talked about the color. I've talked about the lineup. (laughs) um, But what do you think of the taste? What are you picking up on? I think it's great. Um, Matt and I actually warmed up with another, um, I won't say which one, but another rye before this. Um, (laughs) Just because I I found like when I- It's juicy. (laughs) Well, I just found like when I do the the tastings, it's like I I like to have something beforehand to kind of get me going. And this right off the bat was like the best sip ever. very delicious. I, I mean, I don't drink ports or anything, but yeah, I still feel like I can get some. It's a wine, right? Like I can get yeah. some of that wine quality. <laughs> yeah. But I love that it's also a rye. Like rye's have always been my favorite. I know you were saying you started with bourbon and then kind of got into rye, starting with a rendezvous you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And I always started with rye. Um, big fan of the double rye from High West for yeah. sure. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, this is the best of, like, all worlds right here. It, it really is. I mean, you talk about, like, you know, Rendezvous, that was our flagship. That's really how we cut our teeth on blending and producing and, and really putting our mark on the whiskey world, especially here stateside. Um, so we start with Rendezvous rye. It's a little bit older, so a little bit mature, more mature rye um, than the double rye. So mm. that's why also you're going to get those really bright notes. And mm. I always like to remind people when I say spicy, it's not habanero peppers yeah. and it's it's not a burn. It's really, you know, a baking rack. Um, I think about cinnamon and clove and mm -hmm. allspice and um, nutmeg and all those wonderful things. I always jokingly say that I'm like, this is a warm hug in a glass. Yeah. And it's like, doesn't matter which iteration you go through. I love that we're getting to visit Act 9 next to Act 10. Mm -hmm. And then on course, you can kind of see those nuances and see how our blending skills really are on display. Um, I think that's what one thing that I try to tell people all the time about High West. Um, you know, there's always that argument in the community of like purist and having your own distillate versus sourcing. Mm -hmm. We are so transparent that we source, um, but we also work hand in hand with those distilleries on those mash bills and what we're getting from them um, and how we're blending. So whether, you know, you're taking, you know, I really like to take it back to, in terms of wine, a lot of people forget that it's terroir driven. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is still grain coming from the ground. So conditions can change. You can have a really dry season. You can have a really wet season. You can have to rotate crops and, and fields. So all those factors are going in year after year and season after season. Um, um, so you keep coming back to blending. How do we create for the 10th year a consistently beautiful product, you know, high rye finished in those port barrels, softened by, you know, those Ruby and Tawny um, barrels, but we're blending, you know, a variety of ages, you mm. know, starting at four years up to about seven. Um, so it's like, how do we take pieces of that? year after year and what right. we're getting um, and make it into this beautiful iteration that um, is crazily sought after. I think this yeah. year um, we blew records um, at the distillery and like people get, you know, get there at like, pardon my French, but the butt crack of dawn yeah. and, you know, to line up for this. And this year we did have the double bottling. We had a nice surprise with mm. the encore, um, but it is, it is just like a warm hug in a glass. It is one of my favorites, if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> Um, we've got, I mean, honestly, so many great spirits, but Midwinter Night's Dram, um, they're, it's just beautiful. I really shout out to our master distiller, Brendan Coyle, his team, um, at High West. They just, they're cool dudes. I love working with them. Um, but they just geek out too. So yeah. we get to have a lot of fun and a lot of, you know, Hey, I think, what if we do this? Um, I could just see them with their like moleskin notebooks and they're like, right, remember right. that blend that's back in the corner. We pulled that barrel, like in whatever year. Year. I'm like, I think this would like this would be really good here. And they're like, yeah, let's go. Um, and that's it, it really is that organic. Um, so it, it starts out very scientific. Mm -hmm. Of course, you walk through the distillery, you see whiteboards with biochemistry on there and see chemical compounds. Um, but at the end of the day, it's also taking a chance and a little culinary approach, if you will, of like, hey, what if we did a little bit of this and a little bit of that? And you know, magically, this is what happens. And thank goodness people love it. Yeah, it, it's the perfect um, pour, the perfect dram, if you will, for the season too. like, it, it's such a to me, like such a fall, winter, Christmas drink, like just all the nuances of it remind me of that that time. It Absolutely. feels right. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, everything, you know, I think from tasting this version, it's been a minute since I've had Act 9, probably mm -hmm. a couple a couple months, um, but most recently getting to enjoy the, the latest um, iteration with Act 10. And it's really cool to see those nuances. You mm -hmm. still, like you said, you appreciate all those strong, beautiful rye notes that come through, has a lot of texture, a lot of weight to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and bright spice notes but then really kind of softened out. You know, yeah. it's it's got that nice, like, like I said, that nice, like, almost hug or embrace of the Ruby and Tawny port. Um, you know, the, like you said, yes, that is a fortified wine. It comes from Portugal. Um, so typically reserved for dessert wine, a bit mm. sweeter profile. So you think about these grapes resting in those barrels um, and, and coming into contact, um, and now it's interacting with, you know, a blend of, you know, aged rye. Um, so it's really taking on and binding with the rye notes to just kind of soften it out, dried fruit, cranberry, you know, dark plum, mm. everything 
I'm not British, obviously. I'll, yeah. I'll probably uh, throw out some y'alls. I'm from South Carolina, but I just think of like a UK Christmas, right? And like right. think of all those traditional things. You watch the movies, Hallmark and whatnot. <laughs> Netflix, I guess now. Um, but you see all these holiday movies and you think like mulled wine or like a hot toddy. And I feel like this kind of encapsulates it and, you know, in, in a glass. Yeah. Wow. And what what is so with the... 10 because they release them every year right and by mm -hmm. the way for anyone so we're shooting this at monte bar um in like the downtown westlake area of los angeles anybody who's watching this that is out and about here there are plenty of stores that i'm seeing act 10 in still i drive when i saw a, a particular store like an hour away from me had it i dropped everything i happened <laughs> to be at a point where like i wasn't doing anything i saw it on instagram and i drove like 45 minutes to an hour to grab it no regrets. <laughs> um, so I don't want to know the price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luckily, it was. It, was it, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, okay. I, I do my research. <laughs> it, it was worth it. It was worth it. Um, Good deal. And um, yeah, so anyone who's interested, I mean, there's definitely plenty of um, stores that have it here right now. Absolutely. You know, um, if you're looking to find it, you know, in restaurants and bars, mm -hmm. they're just hitting Southern California in the last week or two. So just perfect timing ahead of the holiday season. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have been in stores, most likely people have been chomping at the bit. Um, I know because I'm known as the High West Whiskey Girl. So <laughs> people are like, when am I getting it? Where is it coming? Um, where can I find it? Um, the good news is, you know, for the most part, you can find it. We give every one pretty you know pretty fair shake um mm -hmm. at getting it because we want everyone to enjoy it it is limited release it is you know what we call in the industry highly allocated mm -hmm. um but that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's just like reserved for one or two stores it's right. more so like we just don't produce as much of it as we do the double rye and the mm -hmm. bourbon um and it is really unique and and Honestly, that kind of adds to the charm of it, you know, um, is getting to be like, oh, I found, I got a bottle of Dram. Like, I'm yeah. so excited. Um, so, yes, don't fear. It is fully out in market as of last week. You can find it in bottle shops. You can find it um, in some larger, you know, chain bottle shops, mm -hmm. but as well as hopefully you can find a Dram at some of your favorite places. Yeah. Um, and especially some um, friends of the brand, whiskey bars across town, but also just big fans of High West in general. Yeah. Shall we, I forgot, I put my glasses over there, but shall we compare the nine with the 10 now, the latest release? I think we should. All it's right. all, It's always time yeah. for that. Right. Here we go. So let me grab these. So again, it's like you said, I love the color of this. It's such a rich amber. Um, yeah. You know, it's not too light. It just, you know, holding up in, you know, your camera lights here, you can just see how beautiful this spirit is. Mm -hmm. Um one thing about High West that I always love to tell people, there's we do um, no chill filtration. Mm -hmm. So the minimum you're going to find our bottlings at 92 proof, which okay. eh, it's pretty stout, right? Um, in this particular case, Midwinters, um, the Act 9 and Act 10 come in at a 98.6. So just, you know, just a few yeah. points shy of 100. Um, but I just think, you know, you really see the beautiful weight of it. Um, but this coloring is, is wonderful. Um, and I just, I love the first smell of rye. It just, you can't help but like take in those notes and it's so beautiful. And again, this is coming from a girl that had wanted nothing to do with rye yeah. of probably like eight years ago. <laughs> hmm. What? <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> no. You know I don't like to give tasting notes. So I'm always like, I want to see what you pick I, up on. Yeah, I'm pretty rough at the tasting notes. I know it's it's good. And this is like... And that is perfectly yeah. fine. That is exactly <laughs> why I personally don't like to give tasting notes because I always felt when I was breaking into the industry, you know, you have this like you know, this notion of you should pick up on dried fruits and mm. bay leaves and, you know, all, all these like terms. And I'm sitting here thinking like, I'm not getting that. I'm getting other things or like, this is what speaks to me. Yeah. Or maybe my palate's just not as defined or I don't know how to like, you know, really zone in on it. And I think when I started this role, the one thing I wanted to take away, much as when I was a beverage director, I was like, I don't want people to feel that pressure. I want it to yeah. be approachable. I want them to feel confident in what they taste and what they smell and what they see. And that means way more to me than, you know, tasting notes and hoity-toity like you should taste da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. Um, granted, we're way more fluid in spirits, I have to say, than wine. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, you know, like to have a good time. But 
I personally, you know, without taking over what you think, I already notice a huge difference between the two. I think Act 10 is just a bit softer um, around the edges. You still get those bright, like, rye notes. Mm -hmm. But I can definitely see where the port, in my opinion, has definitely softened those edges. Yeah. Um, even more so than than typical. Mm -hmm. um, I've had the pleasure of tasting Act 1, 3, I think 5, 7. I'm, yeah. like, going, I guess, for the odd numbers here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm nice. It's nice to have act 10 to round out um, the even side, but I don't know. That's, I kind of on the nose, they're very similar, but when it came down to like palate and how it tastes and finishes, it was just a bit softer and a little bit longer. Um, I think in, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I mean, I still have to go back to the nine, but on, on well, the always. first, <laughs> yeah, on the first two sips, I, I, for me, I feel like it's almost a little more peppery. I do definitely agree with the, um, finish being a bit longer. And I think the nine came across like just a little bit sweeter, but I mean, I guess there's also, is there like going to be a big factor with the fact that we just broke the seal on this and the nine did have a good amount of air time? Always, you yeah. know, always. It depends on how much, you know, oxidation right. has gone in. How many times if you pop that bottle, let oxygen in, mm -hmm. this was a brand new fresh bottle. We cracked the cap mm -hmm. um, today on it. So you're definitely gonna, you know, experience it's also been kept at room temperature, you know, in a controlled environment. Right. Um, people don't think about that a lot of times with spirits. When you're mixing and you're in a bar, it's not so much something you really have to, you know, take too much stock in, um, uh, uh, unlike wine. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when we're tasting it straight up, um, you know, it's, it's a little different. I love also that you pointed out because I think, you know, something sometimes, and I've noticed this, like a male-female palate, our tongues are very different. The taste buds that we have, like as, right. as individuals, are very different. Um, I always thought that's why, like guys, tended you know more for the rye. They like that, mm. like you know, either a bitter or a, you know that that dry spice. Um, whereas females, we tend to go for something that you know is a little bit sweeter or softer. We pick up on those mm. nuances a little differently, and that's all just like. A biological thing which yeah. is kind of like crazy and fun too um but yeah i i agree i like really really love the um the bright like peppery notes of the rye um but i do think that in my personal opinion i think that this just has a longer finish um than the nine yeah I definitely and i don't know you know again it could go all to all the factors it could also be like that's how it, it interacted you know mm -hmm. that's how it had you know that that finish in the barrel um different batch it's a different blend um i'd have to pull up tasting you know uh, mash bills to see if you know there was even a difference in the mash bills um we feel like are pretty standard you know as far as what we source from mgp but our own distillate you know <laughs> we're still on the fairly young side of mm -hmm. distilling and we're seeing more of our footprint. And they don't actually, you know, I don't get the breakdown in the percentage. That's proprietary information. Um, but I do know, you know, how much of High West is going into it versus in past years. Mm -hmm. um, we're producing more of our own distillate than we ever have. Um, and we continue to blend. We continue to source. Um, but I love tasting older iterations so I can start to see what is our footprint. I started to take away that I think our footprint, while still high rye, of course, um, it is a little bit softer in some ways, not in a bad way. Just I think it comes out more in that finish, more mm. in like what you're chewing on versus like, you know, that quick punch, those bright, you know, those bright rye notes that we all love. Still there. Um, I don't want anyone to get that misconstrued. Yeah. Still very much there. But I also think that there's like almost like a little maturity or a little like, you know, a little roundness. I keep going back to that because it does. It, it almost like softens the spirit just just a just a hair. Yeah. Nothing to take away from it. It's still going to stand up very strong. It's still a high proof whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so we're no slouch. We're not, you know, dialing that back. Um, I just think it's really cool to see a lot of times it's like, you know, a lot of the factors. But also, is this more high west in it than we've had before? And yeah. I don't know. That's hmm. the cool thing is only if only a handful of people have that uh, right. that secret and that golden ticket. <laughs> I, I will say, like going back to the nine now, I I see what you mean with the ten being a little more softer. Like after going back and forth, I I think the nine is still coming across a little sweeter to me. And it's funny, you know, we we're talking about like tasting notes and all that, and like I hear a lot of people refer to these as like 
plum and fig and all that. And I'm like, I know I like it, but I had a plum maybe once in my life as a little <laughs> kid. And I'm not going to lie and say, oh, yeah, plum. You don't, I don't eat a know plum what the a hell day? plum tastes like. Yeah. <laughs> but I know it's good whiskey. Yeah, <laughs> but, I, I, exactly. I, yeah. I think it's like so cool, right, to, uh, you know, to see those notes and to see those tasting yeah. notes and black currant and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. dried plums. And I think I read something about like Marion berries. I've I've never had a Marion berry. I couldn't tell you. Mm-hmm. I learned last night what a gooseberry was. So <laughs> I'm not here sitting that I'm like very culinary centric. Yeah. But I do know how to describe what mm-hmm. how something makes me feel, yeah. how I interpret it. Um, and that is exactly why my approach is is all about making it more approachable, yeah, right? Yeah. I don't want to come in with like you should, mm-hmm. you know, taste X, Y, Z. That's always been so intimidating to me. Um, and that's why I love, I love that it's a conversation of yeah, what do yeah. you pick up on? What do you like about it? And it doesn't have to be these super descriptive things. It yeah. could be as simple as, I don't know. I just really fucking like this. Yeah. Am I allowed to say <laughs> you that? Are, you are, you yeah, are. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I think that's what I love about it is like, I really like the spirit or I really love this wine or the spear or what have you. Um, it's the same with a dish, right? We mm. don't, you know, when we're sitting over a meal, you're probably not dissecting the dish and being right. like, oh, I pick up on this and that and that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I really like this food. It makes me happy. And I think that's, that's, you know, that's how I got into this is I have really great memories sitting around a dinner table with my family, um, and talking about our day Mm -hmm. and coming together over food. Now I'm under, an adult. I've moved away from home, cultivated my own, you know, like circle of friends and whatnot. And it's still about like, Ooh, let me try your cocktail or like, Ooh, what's that wine or what's that dish. And to be a part of that is really cool. Mm -hmm. And to be a part of a brand that in my opinion is doing it right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, being, being with high West, everything they stand for, how they got started, such a cool story that we haven't funnily enough even gotten into, um, yet. Um, but to know that I'm working hand in hand with really good, people making really good juice that mm-hmm. makes people happy that's enough for me like yeah. i'm i'm good with that as cliche as that may sound i'm really <laughs> really good with that and i i think you, you may have alluded to this earlier but so the base of midwinters is the rendezvous is rye, rendezvous correct? so it's yeah so it's our rendezvous rye and it's finished um which rested mm-hmm. um for it switches up. We don't actually give an amount of time because it depends on the blend that we've chosen itself, like with Rendezvous, but it's finished in Ruby and Tawny port barrels. Right. Um, so a combination there. Um, Encore, obviously a little different this mm-hmm. year. First time we've ever released that and it's finished in white port barrels. So it's still our Rendezvous rye finished in a different port barrel, definitely takes on a different little persona. So I'm excited for us to try that. Um, but yeah, all goes back to our flagship rendezvous. Yeah. And the rendezvous itself is, and I, I should remember this cause I've been to a tasting with you before, but <laughs> the rendezvous is a blend of two different rye mash bills. It correct? is much okay. like, um, much like double rye. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a blend from MGP. So mm-hmm. shout out to those guys, um, and Indiana, um, super talented. They've been distilling like, I, I can't even, I can't even remember the date, but uh, they've been in the game for super long time um really proud to partner with them Mm -hmm. um to take and work with them and take that distillate um and now blend it with our own um so previously you know part of the thing is being a young distiller we opened in 2006 and how do you make whiskey when you have nothing like you need age like how do you put a product out there and you have nothing um uh, sourcing and blending that's really Mm -hmm. how we became who we are um again i go back to the complexity um that comes with blending um but it starts with mgp um they do a high rye so our double rye our rendezvous rye um even in our boo rye our campfire um all of these at midwinters of course all these beautiful products that have a rye base um or some component of rye in it um, is going to be a split base or a split mash bill, I should say, and a blend of two straight ryes. So mm-hmm. we're talking about from MGP, 95% rye and a right. 5% malted rye, mm-hmm. um, which is a little unique. A lot of times it's rye with a malted barley. That's what I thought. Okay. But this is, they're taking that same process mm-hmm. and they're actually doing it with rye. So you're taking those enzymes and I yeah. could get super geeky, <laughs> but I won't. I'll spare everybody. Um, but we're actually, so you think about 95% rye. The base to be a rye is 51%. Yeah. So we're going well beyond that threshold to quite, you know, literally deliver, you know, the rye. And then our distillate, you know, we're bringing in 
Um, you know, it depends on the batch. Um, that's why I love like what our team does on the website. It's like refer because we update that pretty regularly with what we're doing as things change. Um, you know, as our bourbon, you know, the other side of the mash bill changes, the other side of our rye changes. Um, so it could be anywhere from like 75% corn with, you know, 9% rye and a little bit of malted barley. So it tends to be on our side. We kind of balance it out with the other flavors. Um, but I, you know, Rendezvous very much started as a rye. We saw a need in the market. We were a new brand. We were in Utah of all places. And we just set to work of like, let's let's carve out our space in this market. Um, thank goodness, you know, rye has such a rich history in the United States and people forget about it. It was, you know, one of the first grains that really, you know, yeah. became a whiskey and then it kind of died out. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, um, I like to say pretty punchy. Um, it's not for everybody per se. And, you know, we saw the research, we saw a, not even a research, we saw a surgence of bourbon, you know, having yeah. that high corn bill, um, provide, it's much more approachable, right? For the palates, uh, high corn, you think of like vanilla and nougat and yeah. then it mixes with the barrel notes and that's going to provide you a little bit of vanilla and leather and tobacco in there. Um, but in a lot of ways, it's very smooth. It's great. A cocktail, um, and just very palpable. Um, yeah. whereas rye, you know, yeah. rye, she's going to take the show. She's a yeah. star and doesn't matter what you mix her with. Typically she's going to steal the show. And especially when you're high rye, right? Which is what we are. And the purpose of, a, I mean, I guess is a lot of the, uh, fact that rye did kind of die out because was corn more abundant at that time, right? And also, I from what so, I hear, yeah. rye is like a lot harder to work with. Correct? She's so, temperamental. Yeah. Um, and I love to give her like a she. she <laughs> she's got a personality. Um, it's really tough to work with. Yeah. Um, you know, some people, you know, like stay away from it because corn is, corn is softer. Like if you've ever had corn, you've ever yeah. touched corn, it's just, it, it breaks down that mm -hmm. shell on it even. Right. Um and I can say this with confidence. I grew up in the South. So agriculture and farming, like I, I grew up, mm -hmm. um, I think in the state of Car like South Carolina, everybody thought cotton was our number one. It's actually corn was our like mm -hmm. number one crop. Um, so I actually grew up around cornfields and you just, if you touch it and you eat it, you know, it's just a, so it's softer base. So if you think about it in the grand scheme of spirits, um, agave, rum comes from sugarcane, molasses they're already basically ready to be fermented, right? They don't need a conversion per se. Whereas grain, you're looking at some of the toughest grain. I mean, it is, it's it's got a lot of carbohydrates. Those are complex. I, again, try not to get too yeah, chemist right. on us, but it is, it is. It's agriculture meets chemistry, biochem really. And it starts to break down. You know, you got to break down the structure mm -hmm. and rye is a lot tougher to break down than corn. Um, corn's already closer to sugar um, mm -hmm. than rye is. So yeah, those, it, which is why you can taste it, right? Um, but so yeah, to say all that to work with, um, it definitely takes on, you know, it's its own, its own profile just in the breaking down in the cooking process to, yeah. um, uh, uh, to convert it to, you know, convert those starches and carbohydrates over to a sugar to get it ready to turn into a beer mash, um, you know, and, and la di da. <laughs> and with the, is the goal, cause you were mentioning how more of your footprint is being put on all this because more of your, the high West distillate is, is coming about is the goal to eventually get to a point where it's purely high West's own distillate. And with that distillate, is it, do you guys also, sorry if, if this is um, not a good question, but do you guys also source grains or is there a farm in Utah? And then it's like that Utah rye. And is that a big difference from what you might get in Indiana? No, that's actually okay. like both those questions are really great. Um, I am not on the production team, so I don't want to speak for them. Um, but every conversation I've had with Brendan and his team, um, the plan is no. 
like as much as we want to produce our own and we want to mm. be distillers in our own right, I think we've really like made a name and pioneered for like blending. Right. Blending is is hard and yeah. blending is important and um, it's not something to just like turn your nose up at. Um, so I think that's still really core of who we are as a brand. And I think I, I could be speaking out of turn, but I think maybe originally it was like, we're doing this until... We can do our own distillate, but now we've had such great success with sourcing, built these wonderful partnerships. I mean, these guys at MGP and some of our other distilleries that we can't, you know, we are undisclosed, mm -hmm. um, that I don't even know about. Um, these are, these are partnerships, right? Like yeah. we have such a bond with them. I just don't see that happening. Um, but again, you know, you never know. I can, I can't say one way or the other, but I just think from conversations I've had that blending is always going to be at the heart of who we are. Yeah. Um, I also think we want to continue to see our brand thrive and, and meet demand as much as we can um, without sacrificing quality. Um, currently, you know, we did expand from a 250 gallon copper pot still in Park City to um, a much larger one. Um, 1600 gallon <laughs> so very very different yeah. but when you think about all the product that we're producing right like we're trying to do a lot of different stuff um continue to grow um that i just still think blending and sourcing is going to be in our dna and who we are mm -hmm. as a distiller and um and i'm really proud of that fact yeah. um i think some people try and hide it but i think like at high west we wear that as a badge of honor um and then what was the flip side the second question was also a great question. Um, I think it was, uh, the, do the grains also come from the grain. Utah? Yeah. yeah. So we actually source our grain from Southern Idaho. They like mm. to say at the distillery, it's Northern Utah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's just a blend yeah. of terroir, um, if you will there. And, and, um, the grain, um, definitely different. I think that's why I'm personally intrigued by seeing more of high west distillate getting mixed in and right now um apart from high country which is 100 us mm -hmm. and um american single malt um because it has to be that is the category um everything else is a blend um and for us it's all right we're mm -hmm. working on a bourbon um to hopefully in the next year or two or you know whatever um if brendan's listening please don't hold me to this <laughs> um but you know it's we're hoping to see more of our, you know, our, our flex as a distiller mm. and see what we can do and see how much, but that's where you do start to see the difference in grain. But that's why I was saying earlier, it's really important to note as blenders, you know, we're taking what we get in Idaho yeah. slash Utah. Um, I will say we used to have, um, Valley tan whiskey, that's a talk about a harsh, harsh grain. It's kind mm -hmm. of a red grain, not kind mm -hmm. of, it is a red grain, super temperamental, um, grown in Utah, um, and dates back to like Mark Twain was drinking it. And I think he described it in records as like the foulest thing he'd ever had. <laughs> Granted, this was in the 1800s and it probably wasn't like our regulations and what mm -hmm. we're drinking remotely close to what we're drinking now, but a lot of rich history there. Um, so you think about all those different grains, all those different profiles and and it all comes back to blending. Yeah. You know, how do we pull what is native to us, but also what we what we started out doing, which was Indiana, Kentucky, probably, you know, the Midwest. Um, and it's a continue a continuing evolution of how do we put our mark into it without completely, you know, undoing everything we've done. We yeah. still want High West <laughs> to be recognizable. We still want you to touch a bottle now mm -hmm. and touch a bottle five years ago and still be like, yeah, that's High West. Right. There might be, like we're experiencing tonight, there's going to be nuances. I think mm -hmm. any great brand does that. Any yeah. great blender and distiller, you, you that's part of it. You know, it's part of the fun is you continue to grow and evolve. And what if we did this or we tweak this? You still want the basic consistency, but, ooh, that's damn good. Yeah. How do we incorporate that just a little bit more? Um, you know, and apart from being just a single batch or a small batch or, or a single barrel, I should say, and small batch, how do we how do we get to incorporate that? And to go back to the the blending part real quick, I mean, just to make sure I understand this clearly and anyone watching, listening that might not be aware of this, that is referring to one person or I guess a core group of people that are literally their job is tasting a bunch of different barrels and saying, yeah, this one and that one are going to make this and throw a little bit of that guy in there, a little bit of her. Like that's, 
that's what all it is, right? Well, I mean, not all it is. Like that's clearly <laughs> like to me, that's clearly a massive skill to be able to pull out all the specific nuances to know you're trying to get to this, um, I guess, flagship or this Absolutely. standard. Absolutely. Like yeah. you have your base, right? Mm-hmm. I think um, I've had a, dis- a master distiller describe this to me and it, it wasn't a high West, but it, it very well known distiller. Mm-hmm. And he described it to me as you know where you, it's almost like a painting. You know where you want it to go. You know what you want it to look and feel and taste like. How do we get there? And there could be a multitude of ways to get there. Um, but absolutely, it's not just one palette. It's yeah. a team mm-hmm. um, of highly like dedicated, wonderful, hardworking people. Um, I mean, a major shout out to our team at High West. Like they are some of the coolest people. They geek out. But when I say I imagine them with moleskin notebooks, Mm -hmm. it's not too far off. I've seen some of them with moleskin notebooks. Um, But they literally do that. They go and take, let's taste the two year, let's taste a three year, let's taste a four year, different barrels, different, you know, you just, we barrel or we age everything in Salt Lake City. Um, we probably have a few reserves up in parks, uh, up at our distiller in Wanship, um, just north of Park City. But for the vast majority, our spirits are aged in Salt Lake City due to elevation, barometric pressure, things of that nature. Um, but when they're going through, it's like you taste something that is divine, you know, or that really stands out or has like a specific nuance. You pull that aside and they they make notes on it and like, hey, let's give that maybe another year or right. maybe a couple more years. And we make a note. And it's kind of crazy to think like, you know, sometimes they're tasting something and it's slightly off. Mm-hmm. Like the blend is almost there, Right. And then they taste it and they're like, yeah, it's just missing the mark by a scent. But like, hold on. I remember tasting something. And they will go through those notes yeah, and be like, yeah. we pulled that barrel out. And it's barrel whatever yeah. um, tucked away in a corner. Or we've already pulled it out of rotation. We've already made it like sitting. It's out of barrel, but it's ready to be blended. It's sitting in like a stainless container or something. And it's sitting um, already at the distillery. So, it's, you know, there's everybody has their own techniques in different mm. ways. Um it's just, it's, it's just, in, to me, it is crazy. We can sit here on the yeah. flip side and we get to enjoy <laughs> it and I get to yeah. talk about it, but to actually be on the production process, right. to walk through the distillery, to see, you know, these guys and gals going in every day and truly looking at the end of the day, it's a chemical compound and they're mm. tasting, you know, a conversion from 10% alcohol, like ethanol over to, you know, a hundred proof and beyond. And they're like this is it. Like, this is where we cut it. This is where we pull it. And then we start to put it in the the barrel aging process. Um, to me, all the steps along the way are so intricate. And, you know, people, I think at the end of the day, you order it from across the bar or yeah. you go into a bottle shop and you pick it up and you just, you, for, you start to forget how much goes into it and all the nuances and all the different steps. And had you made a different choice, it could taste completely different. Mm-hmm. It could take on a whole new personality. And to me, that's like, that's just really cool. It's very unique. Um, and I'm just so appreciative of the team personally that we have, but all the distillers and the production teams out there, like I know it's a lot of hardworking individuals in the, in the community. Um, and we would not be who we are without them too, without learning from them. Um, you know, we haven't talked necessarily about the history of the brand, but this could be uh, a nice segue. But Dave and Jane Perkins, our founders of High West, actually got the inspiration for High West while being at a wedding in Kentucky at a distillery. Hmm. They walked the grounds. They they saw the process. They did a distillery tour and were like, oh, like we could do this. Dave was actually a biochemist. Uh, so not too far off for him. And Jane is actually the, I think, granddaughter, um, a grand or, or a great granddaughter of a um, distiller from Rochester Distilling, which was single malt. Um, so the little homage there at High West. But, you know, we take cues. You know, we started learning blending from Scotland, that they're mm, master right. blenders there. So that, you know, we take cues from that part of the industry. We've worked with distilleries, you know, um, before Constellation, um, you know, took over the brand in 2016. We were working for with Heaven Hill and Woodford Reserve um, on our bourbon, um, our campfire. We take a third of that is from a peated scotch distillery that's undisclosed, but 
we drew inspiration while Dave and Jane were, again, on vacation. They were smelling the peat in the air and we're like, that is beautiful. And they started talking to the cooks and had this idea of like, what if we did a tri blend? So to me, it's it lends itself to this is a beautiful community, a mm. lot of hard work done by everybody. Um, we just wanted to make our mark and you know come from the West and come from Utah, which is so obscure and like why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when eighty five percent of American whiskey comes from Kentucky, why Utah? <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's a really proud moment for us and to be pioneers, to be the first legal distillery since 1870 in the state of Utah, um, mm. is a really cool fact for us, um, to be leading now over, I think a couple dozen, um, distilleries that are opening up, um, even more craft, uh, craft breweries, um, and some wineries. It's a really cool fact that to know dating back to the early 1800s, we have records of, of whiskey being produced in Utah, um, and it's just, why not honor that? Why I was, yeah. we like to say, why not Utah? Um, and it's, it's some interesting liquor laws or alcohol laws for right, sure. Right. Um, but it's cool to be not only the pioneers of a whiskey distillery and mm. being the whiskey of the West, um, as I think we've taken ownership of that. Yeah. Um, but really diving into that pioneer spirit and blazing the trail for everybody else, cutting through the red tape um, of what it is to be a distiller and a business owner, um, but also to work against, you know, these really tight, like, uh, sometimes laughable for the rest of us, especially here in California, where we can buy liquor across from potato chips at right, the grocery right, store. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it really is like a quite, you know, a juxtaposition. Um, but for us, we take a lot of ownership and a lot of pride in that, that we can lead the way and truly, you know, uh, just it's a big heart. And I know we're on drinks in a movie podcast, so I'd be amiss if I didn't say like, part of High West title came from the Clint Eastwood movie. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Is that High Plains Drifter? Drifter, you got it. <laughs> I haven't seen it, guys. I'm a fraud. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're not a fraud. I, I haven't seen it since I was a kid, yeah. so I would be, like, lying out my ass right now if I said, like, I knew yeah. all the things. I, I know the iconic, like, shots of Clint right. Eastwood. But they actually, you know, apart from having the idea to open a distillery in Utah, partnered with their love of the Mountain West. I mean, what's not wonderful about a cozy campfire and being nestled up in the woods and the mountains um, to connect you with nature. But they actually, when deciding on the name, was like watching the movie High Plains Drifter and was like, you know what? Like, I, I love this. It really cemented our foundation. So I feel like it's pretty fitting that yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're here um, and all, all the cool things about us. Um, but, you know, being in Park City, though, it is a destination, right? It's a mm. ski resort. Um, we actually have the U.S., uh, I think in the United States, the first ski in, ski out gastropub. Um, so outside our Park City location, where a 250 gallon copper pot still, where all mm -hmm. the magic started, there's a um, ski line that runs right beside it, and you can jump off. It's called Quitting Time. So you get off, nice. you pop, you pop the skis or board off, yeah. walk right into the saloon. Um, <laughs> I guess you could get started there too, but that might be a little more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. most people probably get started and they don't, they don't end up on the mountain. <laughs> well, should we jump into this? Uh, I do. Encore? Do you got more Glencairns? I, I don't. We're gonna have to do oh. a jackalope style. And oh, I, think I, I like have that. Two more. I've I have two more. Midwinters is the only one out of the entire lineup that we didn't change. That's right. Yeah, because all the other the core lineup got updated, right? Core line. Yeah, starting in um, starting in April, I think it was. Um, the biggest change was probably not just the label um, and the lineup, but changing the American Prairie Bourbon over to just High West Bourbon had nothing to do. We are still supporting the nature preserve, uh, not the nature preserve. Sorry. Um, we're st still supporting, um, the, uh, native American preserve up there, um, in Northeastern Montana, 10% of proceeds of the bourbon still go to them. Um, but honestly it was just confusion. People thought American Prairie was a type of bourbon mm. um so instead of you know just in a marketing ploy on his employee is not a good word at all in a marketing move um to really unify the brand it just seemed like a good time get back to our roots make it very much like who we are as whiskey of the west in the mountain west mm -hmm. wanting all the labels to be very unified right um and then just clean it up you know <laughs> like a great time to clear up any confusion and so now it's just high west bourbon mm. 
um, and looks, you know, looks really cool. All these labels, um, as you can see, they're a grayscale, like little yeah. um, sketch. So for this one, it has the ram um, with the mountains in the background. Um, Boo Rai, I just actually saw the latest, like the this year's label. Um, I'm really excited about it. I don't know if it's because I just really love the story behind Boo Rai yeah. and like why the jackalope yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on the front. Um, but it's just like really fun or the antelope I should say, but it's just really fun. Um, campfire though, obviously has a campfire. Mm. Um, rendezvous still has a horse. Um, double rye has a cowboy hat on the saloon doors. Mm. Um, midwinter though did not change. We kept that still intact to its Shakespearean ties. Yeah. Um, so it, anyone that doesn't know a midwinter night stram is based off of Shakespeare's a midsummer night's dream. Um, some really f- cool quotes that come out of it. It's not on the bottle, but I did read this um, in the past that there's a quote, I think maybe delivered by Puck, but um, a line that basically says, they're talking about love, I think, but in the bottle, in our sense of it is, you know, one night on the lips is, you know, forever a memory kind of, Mm. that's the connotation anyway. Um, and I can't think of anything more like befitting than than this beautiful spirit and this beautiful dream. What are you thinking on oh. this uh, this encore? So our midwinter night's dram. We were so excited about year ten, Act Ten, um, that we wanted to do something a little special. Our team got very excited at the prospect of introducing white port barrels mm-hmm. instead of our traditional ruby and tawny. Um, obviously different grapes, um, very different profile, both still a dessert wine. Both are going to be more on that, that sweet, to uh, like semi dry spectrum. Um, but what do you think? I, it, the surprise, they surprised me. I didn't yeah. even know we were getting an encore. <laughs> yeah. I've not tasted it yet. I've just been nosing it, but it, it smells sweeter for sure. Right? And it's like a, like vanilla and a little more fruit for it as well. I, I keep getting, and this is like crazy because it's not my favorite fruit like at all, but I keep getting like apricots, Hmm. like a little bit of like apricots and like some pear, which is, it's so funny to me, but a little bit of that stone fruit. Well, this one's interesting. This is, damn, this one might take the, (laughs) might be the winner. (laughs) Right? Um, It's. Again, it's hard to say I have a favorite, but when I when I popped the top on this encore about a month ago, it was I was really like I was I was super intrigued, but really excited by by this by all you think of all the nuances of like white grapes and just being on a lighter side, right? But still having barrel contact, so which is interesting in in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so then you taste it and it's like you get all the wonderful, like all the bright rye notes, but now it's lighter fruits instead of like plums and berries and all the Christmassy things. It's almost like this is a, a late winter right. <laughs> instead of a midwinter. It's a late winter night stram. <laughs> yeah, even on the second sip, I feel like it had some other whole different layers. The apricot thing, like again, it, much like plums, I don't eat apricots, it, but I can relate that because we always had like strawberry jam and an apricot jam as well. So okay. it, it does like on the finish or not on, not even on the finish, but like the back of the palate, I did kind of get that flavor and then it changed to something like softer and maybe more of that vanilla vibe I was getting. Yeah. A little ah, bit yeah, of like a, a little bit of the nougat perhaps. Mm. Yeah, there's some levels to this, man. Right? You know? <laughs> a lot of complexity. Yeah. I think that's why I really enjoy, like, re- like revisiting it, of course. I mean, it's beautiful. Why wouldn't yeah. we? Um, <laughs> but I really enjoy sharing this with other people. At the end of the day, whiskey's meant to be shared. Um, and that's why I wanted to bring it on. Is like, we met a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to enjoy Midwinter Night's Dram Act 10 together. But you know, bringing on this, you know, it is another level of complexity. It's a, it's a completely different spirit. Um, and that's, that's again, just goes back to who we are at high West. And I just couldn't be more proud of the team, um, and be a part of that team and get to represent them because they are like, 
they're little freaking geniuses over yeah. there and they just <laughs> noodle around with some cool ideas. And then this is what we get. Like you and I get to sit at a table talking about how much we enjoy these spirits and like, yeah. <laughs> you know, taste against it. Um, which is really, really awesome. Um, and, and such a joy because uh, yeah, this reveals something new to me every time. I think that's the thing is like every time I revisit, I get, I pick up on a little something else. Yeah. I, I love, I always appreciate a pour or like a whiskey that, yeah, evolves. And this one, even sip to sip, like, I feel like each sip it's offered something else. I, I can't put my finger on every little thing, but that's why I say there's layers. It's like, I'm getting more each time. And there's somewhere as you sip it, you know, it get, it starts to get a little flatter, but this is giving more. Man, yeah. that's really good. And and even, so I just went back to the 10. And yeah, I, I'd say this is a lot more fruit forward uh-huh. in comparison. I do like the pepperiness of the 10, like yeah. side by sighing it with this for sure. But man, this encore. And you said, so distillery only right now, but I think you mentioned in the very beginning or maybe even before we started recording. I don't remember, but that it <laughs> You've might, had too many drams. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> but it might, um, it might come back like a yearly I've, thing again. I've like, heard- maybe possibly mm. a little birdie mm-hmm. told me, um, I don't know. I haven't heard it exactly from master distiller and production team. So it's definitely a theoretical, maybe a hopeful, like, please bring it back. But I recently did hear because we got such rave reviews because the team, honestly, more than, more importantly, like we want, we want consumers, we want people to be happy and enjoy our product. But we as a team want to be proud and be like, yeah. oh, hells, yeah, we did some good stuff right there. Um, and I think Encore, we really impressed ourselves. We weren't sure how it, how great it would be. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think, I think possibly, I have to put all those like, right, like plausible deniability. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think we could see this again. I think it is just so beautiful. It was so well received. It sold out in two days that like people are just are loving it. Um, and really, like you said, it's got so much complexity to it. Yeah. Um, I agree. I just revisited the 10 as well. And to me, that's got a little bit more weight, a little bit more of those like darker berry mm-hmm. flavors. Um, whereas this has more stone fruit. It's a little bit lighter fruit, mm-hmm. much with like that bright spiciness of the rye. So it just, to me, I'm like, could we put this as like a late, a late yeah. winter, <laughs> um, yeah. early spring little addition, but <laughs> Um, the cool thing I have to say about High West is like they 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 always have something up their sleeve. Mm-hmm. Like we, you know, didn't get to this cool lineup with people just being complacent and like right, just being right. like, yeah, I'm good with a bourbon and a double rye. Um, you know, the whole point of double rye was we loved our rendezvous. It was su- it came out to such a claim. People were following it and supporting it and loving it. How do we spinal tap that situation? How do we turn the dial up and truly create? A, a the spiciest, the ryeiest of ryes, which is not a word, but I like to say that it is. I've created that phrase um, to the point where, you know, we are synonymous with rye now, which is a really cool thing. And to think that we only started in 2006. Yeah, that's um, crazy. Man. We haven't even been producing for 20 years. We haven't been doing, you know, doing this for that long in the grand scheme of things. And to know where we're at and to know the following and the support that we have just keeps us pushing that needle further. What else can we do? I think I, probably the top question I get is, yippee ki is it coming back? <laughs> I can't say that it is. I like to say with High West, never say never. I yeah. have no idea. Again, I'm not Brendan. I'm not Isaac. I'm not the team um, in Park City or up in Wanship. Um, I'm just a steward of the brand, and I love to see a success. But – I just, I've learned to say never say never because you just don't know. Those guys are, uh, guys and girls, um, but they are having so much fun. They are having so much fun producing whiskey that they enjoy, Mm -hmm. that they want to see. But hopefully everybody else wants to as well. And I think they do. Like, oh, yeah, there's, definitely. there's a reason that midwinters is hard to come by yeah, these yeah. days. Or if you do, it's like, <gasps> yeah. that's a whole paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's clearly a, a big it's, following. Yeah. For, and then it starts for, to enter the whole category of, is it worth this right. amount of money? And that's a whole other topic. I can't vouch for that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good and definitely worth the hunt. I'm super stoked. I've got my hands on a, you know, the, the act 10 a, a while ago. Hey. Um, that was, 
number one on my hit list. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for uh, coming and joining me. Yeah. I know it's it's been a mission to try and get this going. I appreciate you, know. you <laughs> coming and, and bringing all this stuff, bringing the encore. That was an incredible surprise. And Yay. like, I, I almost I, I almost feel bad that you guys can't. Like, I know. Right now, I honestly, so seriously, I say this all the time. I'm like, ah, uh, <laughs> people have a couple people that are in the know, you know, have yeah. asked me like about encore, and I'm like, like it, it literally hurts to tell people like, I'm so sorry, like I, I can't get that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I had to have a friend stand in line for two plus hours to get this bottle, so mm. I didn't even get it from the brand from like mm. working for okay. High West. Um, I want to make that very clear. They did not send it to me. I like a friend of mine who was already going did the work. Um, but thank it's, you. You, thank yeah, you, thank you, yeah, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Um, but it's you know in this in a similar vein, we have um, just like as a cool plug, but you know it's something new. It's the first time we've ever done it. We are just releasing our prisoner share, um, which is our whiskey aged in prisoner red blend wine barrels. Um, we did a very, very small amount. Um, it's incredibly limited. Um, I don't even know that I'll get a bottle. I, I hope I'm praying, um, that I can get some, but that just shows you like, it's, it's so cool. The things that we have, that's part of the constellation brands, yeah. um, and, and prisoner being one of our sister companies up in Napa, um, and a beautiful partnership. They also released a wine called complicit that is finished in high West nice. whiskey barrels. Nice. So it's a really cool double release. Um, for those that are fans out there of either prisoner and or high West. Um, but it just shows you like we're just trying to do so many cool, fun, funky and unique things that really excite us, but hopefully resonate with everybody out there. Um, whether you're a fan of the brand or you're just discovering the brand, um, we hope you just love it as much as we do. Yeah. And speaking of like the other stuff you do, I mean, I remember um, Bar Jackalope over here at Seven Grand in downtown L.A. For anyone who's out here, they had like a high west double rise single barrel finished in gin that my friend and I really love. We would get that all the time. Well, the recent and one is Moscatel. Moscatel. And I, yeah. I remember we did try that. That was yeah. a really good one too. Finished in Moscatel. They yeah. actually are featuring it. Like obviously a little plug to our friends at Seven Grand mm. and Bar Jackalope. Um, but they are actually featuring it right now as an old fashioned on the menu. So you can get the High West Double Rye finished in Moscatel, which is very similar to a port grape. Um, very, it's a sweet wine on mm -hmm. think the Muscat or Moscato. Mm -hmm. Um, beautiful profile. Really. I just honestly had it recently. Very nice old fashioned. Um, but yeah, they've, but cool thing is there's some really great, uh, barrel selects out there. Mm -hmm. I could plug a few more places, but trust me, they're out there. Yeah. We're doing really, really cool things. Um, you know, even like you said, our bourbon or a double rye, finishing them in those unique cask finishes. Um, I think we may be changing up our barrel select program. Mm. So we'll see how that evolves and what that looks like. Um, but for right now, we're definitely taking this core two and seeing, you know, we've done Madeira, we've done Cognac, we've done rum, obviously Moscatel, um, White Port, um, Last batch, I think I did um, some Manhattans, which is really <laughs> unique. Um, gin finish, um, Aquavit. Uh, so just wow, yeah, we're we're having a yeah. lot of fun. And then people ask me all the time. They're like, "Are y'all going to bring back the white whiskey and the vodka and the peach vodka <laughs> and the gin?" I'm like. Uh, y'all know more than I do, <laughs> um, which is really just exciting. It just shows that I'm, I'm so thankful that people resonate with this brand. Um, they take it, they want, they want more. And I think that's what drives us as, um, distillers and blenders, um, and just overall producers, right? Like yeah. we love what we do and I hope, I'm just so happy to see that other people do as well. And it really, um, they, they want it, they want more. Um, so I don't know guys, we'll, we'll see what's next for high West distillery. Yeah, man. Well, thank you so much. Now I'm, it's dawning on me how crazy this is like high West on the show, midwinter. Ah! Like, I'm like, hold Out on a of second. Utah <laughs> yeah. of all places. Like right. I said, why not Utah? Um, honestly, a really cool place to visit. Yeah. Um, I hope that you're able to get there yeah, um, yeah. at some point, um, whether at our Park City location. Mm -hmm. um, it's so cool. We have an award-winning food and beverage program, so you will have top-class service, really great drinks. Our Old Fashioned is actually kind of how Burai got started. It's huh. a split base because of, 
Utah liquor laws. That's how it started, but it was a split base between bourbon and rye. Um, so I, I just feel like there's an incredible cocktails, um, shout out to Holly and Steve out there. Um, and then if you go up to one ship at our distillery and our refectory, you're going to have just top class service. It's an incredible, um, experience to see the vats, to see our bottling and our blending and everything in action, but then go over to our tasting room and our general store. Um, but then if you want to really be bougie and splurge, you can have a catered, um, basically a wine and whiskey pairing dinner um curated by the mm. chef um top class bartenders um i just the whole team we just really really like what we do so yeah, <laughs> and yeah. i think it shows um so i hope if anyone's out there please 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 check it out it's definitely something to something to experience um again get off quitting time pop off the skis yeah. and hopefully you can <laughs> walk in i know it gets busy during the season but <laughs> it's it's a really cool experience yeah definitely got to check it out well thanks yeah. again becky thanks it's rudy been great. Cheers, cheers to you man yeah. <laughs> thank you for listening to the drinks and movie podcast you can now find us on Instagram at Drinks in a Movie Pod, where we'll be posting photos from all the various films that we discuss. You can also email us at Drinks in a Movie Pod at gmail.com. Please rate, review, and subscribe, and thank you for listening.